All right, everybody, we are talking in this module, module number five, about two different families of mental health conditions that actually are related because they are both anxiety related disorders, the obsessive compulsive and related disorders, and then also to the trauma and stressor uh, related disorders. We've already talked about obsessive compulsive disorder because we're taking the obsessive compulsive and related disorders first. And that is a big disorder diagnosis, lots of different things to kind of think about there with OCD. And we've just reviewed obsessions and compulsions. And then right behind OCD in the DSM-5 in this chapter comes hoarding disorder. And usually when I'm teaching this class in the classroom, if people, if students get the DSM-5 and start digging around, I usually will hear about hoarding disorder before we even get there. Students will say, Professor Killian, did you, I didn't know hoarding was a diagnosis. Have you, have you ever seen the, the show on TV, uh, Hoarders, before? And I have, I've seen several episodes of that TV show. And uh, sometimes people are surprised to find hoarding disorder as like an actual diagnosis. And it is. It is a brand new diagnosis. Uh, we may have mentioned this back in module number one, that anytime a new uh, edition of the DSM is published by the APA, a few disorders and diagnoses go away, a few are added, and everything else stays the same. Well, here's one of the newer diagnoses. This is one of the new diagnoses in the DSM-5 called hoarding disorder. A, a, a behavioral problem, a, an emotional anxiety related problem that's been researched for many, 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 many years. We think hoarding is a new issue and new phenomenon. Actually, there are reports back in the 1600s and 1700s uh, in, 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 in all around the world of people who struggle with this unusual behavioral emotional struggle called hoarding disorder. And people are sometimes kind of surprised to find it in the OCD section. Well, that's because we really kind of believe that hoarding disorder, you can, unless you've watched lots of episodes of Hoarders, you may know this. Um, hoarding and OCD are two separate struggles, but they're very similar. They're very related. And here's the reason why. Usually people hoard because they are obsessing over something. We talk about OCD, right? What do they obsess over? Well, they obsess over the value of items or collecting items or, or not throwing items away. And there is this anxiety, stress, uh, distressing, obsessional part of hoarding. If you've ever known someone who really struggled with hoarding, they weren't just a pack rat. They really struggled with this thing called hoarding. You know that oftentimes deeper down inside, there is this anxiety. It's not just a habit. It's not just something that I kind of do because I kind of like to. There is this emotional conflict. And again, if you've ever watched the show Hoarders, you've seen that conflict, the internal conflict that start that's where it starts and the hoarding behavior is just an is just an outflow of what of what I'm struggling with on the inside the anxiety and the and the need to hold on to something and the stress over the idea the obsessional stress of letting something go so therefore people compulsively hoard so there's the obsessional piece and then there's the compulsive piece there's the internal piece there's the external piece. The obsession is the internal piece. The compulsion is the external piece. So hoarding kind of belongs in kind of this OCD family, um, so to speak. Again, oh, uh, hoarding is one of those things we sometimes laugh about, just like OCD. We sometimes kind of snicker or we sometimes kind of make fun of people who you know hoard. We see them as dirty. We see them as lazy. We see them as you know pack rats or, or whatever it may be. Um, but really hoarding can be, and for, for many people who struggle with it, it really can be a serious kind of struggle. And I want to review with you just very, very quickly the three, uh, the three basic core symptoms of hoarding disorder, an actual diagnosis that may need treatment. And then I want to mention to you three or four just important aspects uh, of this important kind of struggle and disorder. So number one, hoarding disorder has a behavioral symptom a cognitive slash emotional symptom, and then it has kind of a, a result symptom. I can say it that way. So here is the here is the behavioral symptom. So obviously hoarding disorder is characterized by a persistent pattern of hoarding material things um, regardless of their value. So again, some people may hoard like money or valuable things, right? Uh, most people who hoard stuff hoard invaluable things, newspapers, magazines, stuff they find that really don't have much value. So hoarding begins with this excessive, inappropriate hoarding of material items that, that in most instances do not, the, the items are not of much physical value. That's number one. That's the behavioral symptom. Number two is the emotional slash cognitive symptom. The hoarding is the result 
of this perceived need to save items and then stress over the idea of getting rid of them. And so that's kind of the co- that's kind of the cognitive emotional kind of symptom. So there's the hoarding starts with hoarding or obviously hoarding disorder starts with the behavior. But then deeper than that, there is the emotional cognitive piece of the reason why I hoard is I'm not trying to save stuff up for, for a garage sale because that's what I do. I'm doing it because I have this perception that I need this stuff. I have this perception that this stuff is valuable and the idea of getting rid of it becomes distressing to me. And then the third symptom is kind of the result or, or the disruption symptom. And so and then as a result, then my living spaces become unhealthy and become dangerous and become cluttered. And if they're not cluttered, the DSM says it's only because other people have come in and thrown all my stuff away. So there's kind of that, there's kind of that living space kind of a symptom. So there's kind of a hoarding, that's the behavioral part. There is the reason why I hoard. I hoard because I think I need all this stuff and I get stressed out and there's lots of anxiety about getting rid of something. And then as a result, there is the living space that is then uh, disruptive. And my, my living space then becomes unlivable in an unhealthy way because of all of the stuff that I'm accumulating. So those are the three kind of core behavior, sort of, sort of the three core symptoms of hoarding disorder. And again, I want to kind of highlight, I, I mentioned for you, I mentioned to you, I think there are five uh, items I put in your lecture notes at the end of hoarding disorder that I want to kind of highlight because because from a just from a definition standpoint, hoarding disorder has a pretty simple definition and symptoms. But obviously, this is a disorder that's a lot more complicated. Uh, than it can be. We're going to talk here in a few weeks about eating disorders. And again, my experience in, in teaching about eating disorders is many times students think they see eating disorders as being really basic. People either overeat or they don't eat enough because they think they're going to get fat. Well, that's part of it. That's where it starts. But eating disorders have a usually a very deep psychological, emotional root that is often complex. Same with hoarding. Hoarding on the surface, hoarding disorder and hoarding behavior looks pretty basic. People hoard a bunch of stuff. They need to get rid of it. Well, if you've ever, again, if you've ever watched some of the hoarders show, you know that that when you kind of get close to a person who's a hoarder and start having an honest conversation with them, usually around getting rid of something, you realize the conflict. So number one, I highlight for you in the notes that number one, people with hoarding behavior, oftentimes they lack insight and they rationalize their behavior. They, they, they don't see what we see. To them, their behavior makes sense, like a lot, like a lot of things. Kind of like when you, if you're those of you in there who are going to be addiction counselors, you're going to have lots and lots of clients who their addiction makes sense to them. You know, their drug using and their or their drinking, to them it makes sense. They don't see it as they they don't see it how we see it. They're they're too close to it, and so to them, they just rationalize their behavior as a way to not deal with it. And that's true with hoarding behavior. Is people oftentimes do not see what we see. They don't see the irrationality of it because of their lack of insight and or denial. That's a common dynamic in hoarding behavior. Uh, number two, many people many people begin to hoard or they hoard because of the sentimental attachment they have to certain objects. So certain things remind me of my mother. Certain things remind me of my childhood. Certain things remind me of my wife who passed away. So they'll gather dolls or they'll gather phone books or they'll gather newspapers because they have strong, kind of unhealthy, irrational, sentimental attachments. They get they get sentimentally connected and attached. Maybe you know someone who is, is that way. They're real sentimental. They're they're real connected to certain places and times and objects. And and so people who are hoarders are often very, very sentimental people. Hard for them to let go of this old newspaper because it's from 1972, and that was the year that I was born or my mother or whatever, something like that, right? And so they get kind of, re- they kind of, kind of in, an, in, in an inappropriate, unrealistic way, they get sentimentally attached to things. Number three, and again, if you've ever watched the hoarders show, you know this, people with hoarding disorder oftentimes get hung up on the misperception of value and aesthetics is the way we would say it. They believe that a stack of phone books is still worth something, or I'm going to still use it. They believe, well, the reason why I collect 52 umbrellas is because I can sell them or because it rains here a lot and I may need one. And, or, or this, the, you know, or, or they'll have less old stacks of just books. And in their mind, they think the books are worth thousands of dollars when in reality they're worth about 50. And so there's that misperception of value and quality and aesthetics that this is important. I can use this. I'm going to use it. 
This can be used. This is still useful. Don't throw it away. This can still be used. And so there's that misperception. Um, you know, this idea that, again, it's more of a cognitive, emotional kind of thing where people have this misperception of value and how useful something can be. Last two things, and we're going to be done on hoarding disorder. Um, like many mental health conditions, uh, the issue of control is usually at the center of hoarding behavior. Uh, oftentimes, people will hoard, at, Freud would say, as an unconscious way for me to try to control something. And so people sometimes, you know that we live in a world today where people often feel a lack of control or out of control because we live in unusual times. And people sometimes have been through really difficult things in their lives. And so internally, there is this lack of control or feeling out of control. And so sometimes what happens is people will begin to hoard. It's their unhealthy way to control something or to control their environment in an unhealthy way. But the only problem is it just just leads to being out of control. So it doesn't get them what they're looking for, unfortunately. So that's why it's unhealthy. So oftentimes control is a big issue or being out of control or lack of control is a big issue for people who hoard. And then lastly, and again, you probably have thought of this or maybe you've seen this. Sometimes we see hoarding as a as an outflow of an unresolved issue, especially around loss. Now, this isn't always the case, but uh, in my experience and some of the experience I've had with people who hoard and some of what I've learned from research and study is, although this is not true for everybody, Many people may begin to hoard as the result of a loss. And so my mother or my father passed away. And then as a result of that, I began to hoard stuff. You know, um, I, I didn't want to let go of any of their stuff because by letting go of their stuff, that means I'm letting them go. I don't want to let them go. I'm not ready to let them go. So I hold on to all their stuff. And then I start collecting more stuff, maybe stuff that kind of reminds me of them. And so by not letting go of all of this stuff, if it reminds me of my daughter who died years ago or of my son who died or of my of my parents or my grandparents who are real important to me and they've moved on, maybe and maybe on kind of a deeper emotional level, I've never really dealt with that loss. And I don't want to let go of this stuff because this stuff reminds me of them. It is them. And so to us, we connect things with people or things with events or things with times in our lives. And we don't want to let go, you know, consciously, subconsciously, whatever. We don't want to let go of stuff sometimes. And so we hold on to things or people, in this case, things, because if I let it go, well, then I'm not ready to let go because there's some things in my life I still am not, I still have not let go of and I don't want to let go of. So that's a little bit deeper. And so, again, that's an example of when I say, just like in eating disorders, uh, sometimes with hoarding, there are some deeper roots that can be kind of complicated, can run kind of deep, can be called complicated when it comes to the reasons why people hoard. So I wanted to, I always cover hoarding disorder just for just briefly as we just, as we've just done whenever we cover this section of the DSM, because again, I think it is something that I want you to be familiar with. We see more and more and more people today kind of struggling with these kinds of behaviors. And I want you to kind of see it as another way in which people can battle with obsessive compulsive types of struggles. This idea of obsessive and compulsive hoarding is an important piece. So that's hoarding disorder. Come back to the next video. We're going to talk about the trauma and stressor related disorders. And really what we're going to talk about is the big one in that family, post-traumatic stress disorder. I will see you next time.